Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Shark Squall 2.2 helmet. I'm going to run through the features of this helmet and also explain what I found out when I wore this helmet on the road. Shark's Squall 2.2 is the third generation of Shark's helmet that lights up in the dark. There are LEDs at each of the three vents and a rechargeable battery that's stashed on the inside powers them. You switch them on at the neck roll, there's a switch just here, and then you can have either a solid light or a flashing light to help you stand out when you're riding at night. When it's time to recharge, there's a port inside that accepts a micro USB cable to restore the power. Battery life for these lights is good, with a solid light lasting for a few hours and then in blinking mode it will last even longer. So that lighting system is the main standout point about this helmet, but there's plenty of other stuff to cover. The shell is polycarbonate, which does tend to make a heavier lid, but this size medium Squall 2.2 weighs in on our scales at 1547 grams, which is actually pretty respectable, especially for a plastic helmet with an internal sun visor, because that always adds some extra weight, and then you have to take into account the extra weight of that LED lighting system. Venting is reasonable, but not extraordinary, as is often the case with plastic shelled helmets. There are two air intakes. The first is at the chin and has a rocking switch. You push the bottom in to open it and then push the top back in to close it again. Some customer reviewers say they find themselves checking that the vent is open as it doesn't have the most positive operation. And I'd agree with them as I found myself doing that quite a bit myself in my time with this helmet, just making sure that that vent was open like that. The top vent has a single intake with this sliding switch on top, exposing a hole that goes down into the interior. There are V-shaped channels in the impact liner that allow air to move back from that inlet and then exit at two holes at the exhaust vent just here. I noticed air from the chin vent coming in more than I did from the top vent. I noticed the top vent more because I could hear a small amount of movement in this switch. It made a sound like a small flag flapping in the breeze as I rode. I'll try and put it near the microphone so you can hear. It's a bit like that. And that irritated me when I was riding in town, but then I found as I got up to speed and the wind noise kicked in, that really the sound of that was masked. There are 25 customers who've left reviews for this helmet as I record this video, and not one of those reviewers has mentioned that noise from the top vent. So it could be something that's peculiar to me and the two bikes I rode for this review. The visor on the Squall 2.2 mounts easily and is protected by a pinlock anti-mist insert. It's a pinlock 70, they're middle grade, and it's a max vision insert, so it covers virtually all of the eye port for a clearer view. It's backed by an internal sun visor, which operates on this rotating switch by the left ear, which I found intuitive and easy to use. That sun visor, like all shark helmets I've tried, doesn't have an anti-mist coating, so you may find yourself lifting the main visor to draw in some air to demist that sun visor. Moving to the inside, the comfort lining lives up to the billing. It's very comfortable, it's supportive, and it's plush with soft fabric covering the foam. At the top of the cheek pads just here, there's no foam. Shark have deliberately left that bare of foam to make it easier to fit spectacle arms down the side. There are recesses behind the cheek pads on the inside to accommodate intercom speakers, and I fitted this helmet with a Cardo Pack Talk Bold unit. It fitted relatively well, but it was tricky to get the helmet lining back in while accommodating both the wiring for the intercom and also for the inbuilt lighting system. And finally, talking about the interior, the strap fastener for this helmet is a micrometric buckle style arrangement, which is normally the case for a helmet of around about this price point. It's quite clear that the standout feature about this helmet is that LED lighting system. So if you're the sort of person who wants that extra standout feature on the road, then absolutely go for it with this helmet. But if that lighting system isn't all that important to you, then you can save yourself quite a few quid by going for a Shark D-Squall 2 helmet instead. So where this helmet costs between £199.99 and £229.99, depending on the colour scheme, that D-Squall 2 costs between £150 and £170, again depending on the colour scheme. And the only real differences between those two helmets are that the D-Squall 2 doesn't have that light system and it has a slightly lower grade interior than this helmet. So if the lights aren't important, as I said, have a look at that D-Squall 2 instead. So let's move on to sizing and approvals for this helmet. The Squall 2.2 comes in sizes extra small to extra large, and there's one shell size that covers them all. Although sharks say there are several different impact liners, so the smaller helmets aren't just padded out with foam to make a big helmet fit a small head, which is often the case with helmets that only come in one shell size. 
The Shark Score 2.2 is approved to ECE 2205 for the road and it carries an ACU gold sticker to show it's approved for use on track days and in competition. So this helmet itself hasn't been tested by the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Scheme, but the Squall 2 that came just before it and is essentially the same outer helmet achieved four stars, which is a very respectable performance. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Shark Squall 2.2 helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.